So today we have Christina all the way from Spain, who's created a super cool yoga pose estimator powered by TensorFlow.js. So let's go to talk to Christina to learn more about this. Hi, Jason. Um, so my name is Christina, as you said. Um, I'm a student at the University of Manchester, and I've developed yoga AI this past three months. So I got the idea from um, my internship. I did a year-long internship at a very big um, IT company, mm -hmm. and they were doing really cool stuff with machine learning, and I really wanted to get involved. So I was also doing a bit of yoga, um, they're very expensive in London, so I only did a couple <laughs> classes. So I'm, I'm not even really good at them, which is like ironic. I'm sure you're better than me though. I, I, I'm, I'm terrible at yoga. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of put two and two together and I decided to create Yoga AI. I spoke to some of my coworkers who um, gave me really cool um, uh, YouTube playlists to follow, to learn a bit about it. Um, to I taught myself JavaScript from YouTube, and awesome. I also they, yeah, they also introduced me to TensorFlow, which is what I used to create this um, AI model. So this sounds really cool, and I'm sure everyone watching right now wants to see it in action. So can you show us and tell us more about your, the creation and yeah, of course, perfect. So this is the landing page. Um, so you have two options: learn and practice. Mm -hmm. So if you go to learn. Basically, this section is to learn the poses. I've basically classified six main poses, and you can hold them for 10 seconds. The timer restarts if you make a mistake. So as you can see, if you hold the mountain pose for 10 seconds, the counter starts going down. And if it notices you're not doing the pose, it stops. And then once it detects another pose, and if it's wrong, it, the timer restarts. <laughs> um, this is a bit complicated. Um, it was quite hard to think of the logic behind it, but uh -huh. as you can see, it works. And um, this is a tree pose. Yeah, already that's much more yoga than I can do. So <laughs> very impressed. <laughs> so I'm curious to learn a little bit more about the that how you're doing this pose estimation. Um, like, how are you achieving that? So I'm using TensorFlow's PoseNet to detect the um, po the different points in the body. Okay, cool. And was that trained via Teachable Machine, or did you manage to take the raw data and then you see when it's in roughly the right position? Or what's the algorithm for detecting the actual pose? Because I think PoseNet allows you to get the points, but it won't tell you you're in a tree, for example. So that how are you determining what a tree actually is? So I used another um, machine learning model on top of it using ah. a classification model from ML5.js. Ah, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're basically feeding the first model into the second, and then the second is taking that data and trying to learn um, from that as to when the tree pose is, is, is achieved. OK, perfect. Um, so what were the challenges and uh, maybe even delightful things you discovered when using TensorFlow.js and the PoseNet model? Um, so surprisingly, the machine learning bit was the easiest. I think the hardest bit was to think through the logic of the the actual application. So when you were doing certain pose and you did a mistake, yeah. you don't want to be penalized immediately because uh -huh. it could also mean that the machine learning model had detected something um, incorrect. Slightly an error or something like this. Yeah. yeah. So it was quite hard to think through the logic of it, especially when the, um, the model is constantly trying to detect new poses and making it linked to the count down was quite difficult. And I'm actually pretty sure I didn't do it very well. Like I'm pretty sure it could be made even better. But I think that um, considering it's my first project, it's more than enough at the moment. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I'm just curious, like how much training data did you need to like recognize a pose? Did you have to repeat it like 10 times, 30 times? Like what gave you good results, I guess? So I did. Um, like in the span of 30 seconds, I would do a video clip of me performing the pose. And I, I did that I did that like three to four times. No. Okay, so not too much needed to get some yeah, results yeah. like this. And I must say, I've, I've tried this out myself um, uh, after you sent me the demo. And like, I'm terrible at yoga, but I did manage to hold a few poses for, for the 10 seconds that was required. And it does work really well. I, I, there's one where you do have to stand on one leg and this kind of stuff. And I fell over and it did pause the timer 
Um, so it's really cool to try out. But yes, it's, it's a great fun way to kind of get some exercise, especially in the current time. So it, it's really cool. Um, so if people want to try this out right now, how can they actually do that? Is it available live on a website somewhere? Yeah, it's on a website. I think the link is going to be in the description okay, of the video, yeah. I think. Yeah. And um, also my code is available on GitHub. And I also have links to my references and the YouTube channels that I um, followed. I guess, Christina, like, what are your future plans for this? Is it fully polished or do you have some other things you want to add to this yoga? Maybe more poses or more, more uh, interesting graphics and things like this? So I definitely have ideas in ways I could improve it. Obviously, the most obvious idea is to create an app, not just a website. Um, uh -huh. I also wanted to make it more animated, but my web development skills aren't that developed yet. <laughs> sure, um, yeah. And I also had the idea of putting some sound into it, because obviously when you're doing yoga practice, you don't want to be looking at a screen constantly. True. Yeah, you might be looking downwards or something, so you can't see the screen exactly. in that situation. Yeah. That makes complete sense. That's really cool. Do you have any advice for others who might be getting started just like you? Maybe they're new to JavaScript, new to machine learning. What tools and resources did you use to get started that might help others? Um, so I use the coding train YouTube. He ah, is cool. a professor at NYU. He's great. His videos are super engaging too. So I would definitely recommend his YouTube videos. And I also would say that um, try everything out. Like if you have the craziest idea, like why not? Um, yeah. You're going to learn from literally everything. I've learned things from doing this, which I couldn't, never have imagined like and also there's things i've learned which i still don't understand which is good right like it's a <laughs> but that's step. okay it's a, yeah it's completely fine to kind of peel away the onion layer by layer as you need to right there's no need to dive right into the lower level details and machine learning is like a very complex beast myself included it takes me a long time to start peeling away those layers so um i think it's completely fine to just start at the top and then as you need to go deeper and deeper to do what you need to do right so that's cool yeah exactly Cool. Thank you very much, Christina, for sharing us that. And of course, uh, everyone else, do go check that out right now after the show. And thank you very much for presenting today, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, too.